Someone recently pointed out to me that we've done, we've done a lot of episodes on leadership, but never on effective team leaders and team leadership. So I thought that I'd start by introducing what the role of a team leader is. And the truth is, it's more complex than you might imagine. If you're currently leading a team, you're likely managing a, a really diverse group of individuals, depending on what type of company you're in. But team members, for example, might come from different generations. You might have some boomers, Gen X, millennials, Gen Zs. And each generation is driven by unique incentives and values and making a little, little, the task of doing leadership just really, really difficult if everybody wants something different. So on top of this, you've got hybrid work environments, fractional work, you've got work from home, you've got full hybrid, you've got full work in the office. You've just got all these different dynamics, not to mention differences in culture and differences in belief systems and differences in incentives. There's just so many things that you have to pull together. So if you're trying to be a strong team leader, there's a couple of things that you should focus on. So I'm going to give you just a short top list, maybe the top top 10 or so things that you could do to be a better or more effective team leader. Here we go. Uh, or what you need to understand. So number one is the role of a leader is to build the business and grow the team at the same time. So if you're a team leader, you're not just expected to do one or the other. You need to make sure that you can focus on building growth within the business, but you also need to focus on giving opportunities to the team for them to accelerate their learning. If you're focused on one and not the other, you're going to find that, especially if you take your focus away from the team, that they are not going to be able to perform at a capacity at which you find desirable. You need to focus on both. And sometimes that's hard, but once again, that just draws emphasis to the reason why we limit WIP. We need to make sure we're honoring WIP, limiting WIP, and focused on all the things we need to focus on. Okay, let's go to number two. Appreciation is the most valuable currency your team wants and needs. I think that too often I find myself, you know, seeing teams that operate and when a team is doing a really great job or individuals on a team are doing a great job, what are they often rewarded with? You guessed it, more work. And anytime you have the structure where you're constantly piling on work to a team, you're going to find quickly that the team becomes disenfranchised or jaded and they don't want to work as hard. They don't want, they're not interested in it. They lose interest in providing a better solution. So I think you should regularly give team members positive feedback, give them kudos, publicly recognize the things they're doing good, and find ways to identify that you can help them improve and stay on track. All right, number three, praise in public, coach in private. And what I mean by that is sometimes I've seen individuals who do a great job of praising their team in public, but then the second something goes south, they also criticize their team in public. Ouch. That's not where you want to be, Right. It's going to happen inevitably where somebody gets hot headed or somebody says something that they don't mean. And, you know, if you're doing it in a public setting, oh, my goodness, this is bad. You, you become the Marine drill sergeant instead of the team lead. So my advice for you is lots of times you just, to, you just have to chalk up things to an honest mistake and say, OK, if it's praise, I'll give it publicly because I want the whole world to know how amazing my team is. But if it's not praise, I'm going to make sure I have the right setting to talk about that. All right. Number four. You aren't just a team leader. You're also the head scout for talent and a training coach. So sometimes you need to make sure you're taking on additional responsibilities in your profession. If you're brought on as a team lead, that means that you're being asked to help discover new people who might be a good fit for the team. Help identify when things aren't going well with a team. If there's an individual that needs to be transitioned to another team, there's just lots of things that you can look at regarding personal and professional growth. And you need to make sure you're focused on those things. All right, here we go. Number five, as a team leader, EQ is more important than IQ. You got to have a certain amount of intelligence to lead a team, but that's not enough if you want to make the team uh, achieve the next level of performance. So you have to ask yourself, how strong is your emotional intelligence? Are you empathetic to your team members' needs that they're dealing with right now? Do you even know and appreciate what they're facing outside of work? Are you willing to listen, truly listen, and respond to what they're asking from you? How about your curiosity quotient, your ability to stay curious about changing business environments and needs and remain open to new ways of solving emerging problems? I think you need to really understand those things are more important than how smart or intelligent you are. All right, number six, teach your team to bring solutions, not just a problem. I call this one wine and cheese because everybody likes to wine, but nobody likes to bring cheese. Oh, that's terrible. But yeah, dad jokes are free. 
you need to teach your team that if you're going to come to me with a problem, at least come with a couple of solutions that are proposed solutions. Even if the solution's a silly solution, I'd rather have them come with something than come empty handed. And the benefit here is it gives the entire team the impression that their input is valuable and that we will listen. Okay. So number seven, ensure that your team understands and commits to the disagree and commit principle. Uh, what I mean by that is sometimes in team meetings, it can be emphasized that we want to hear everyone's opinion and especially those who disagree. But it's also clear that we don't run a business based on majority rule voting and, and oftentimes leaders need to make the final call. Once we left the meeting room, it's a team together, a uh, team apart. And everyone needs to support the decision and everyone needs to move in the same direction. Many business decisions are close calls or they don't necessarily align with what you thought might be the best idea, but it's neither here nor there. You still need to align with what needs to be done. Number eight, if you love drama, go to the theater because drama at work will ruin your business. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> This is just a silly way to say, you know what? Your team doesn't have the luxury of team members saying, oh, I'm going to try out my survivor, a real housewives of Atlanta, you know, conversation here. And it's, it's, it sounds funny, but truthfully, honestly, aggressive behavior, gossiping and trash talking are poison. You just got to stay away from those things. You got to make sure that you're on path to help the team be successful and that you're doing whatever they need in order to engage. Okay, let's go to number nine. Make sure you and your team members stay in their lane. Honestly, I don't like the term stay in your lane, but in this case, it's appropriate. When a business is not performing, there's a strong temptation to force teams to tell other teams what they should be doing or what they're doing wrong. It seems especially tempting for like non-marketers, for example, to tell a marketing team what they should be doing, even though they have no experience in marketing. As a team leader, you got to stop this behavior immediately, but when it starts or before it starts. Your team has a clearly defined vision and mission. You need to stay focused on that and let the team worry about how to create their unique mission of what they need to do and stay focused on it and see it through to the end. Uh, and then finally, number 10, sometimes a team member must find their happy place somewhere else. You know, this is so hard to say, but I've let people go. I've fired people. I fired good people. And it's not a good feeling. I'm not proud of it, but there's always going to come a time when a team member is just not the right fit for that team. And you try them on a different team and maybe they're not a fit for that team. And you try them on a third team. There comes a point where you're like, you know, yeah, this is, this is the end of the road. Right. And, and I think that there's sometimes where we're afraid to say it, but we know it's true. So we need to make sure that we help that person find their next opportunity or give that person a, a great objective review. If someone calls and asks for a recommendation, but there are times where you just got to cut chase and say, you know what? Yeah, we, we can't just have somebody on a team who's bringing us down. Um, and when we're done and a person's gone, there's an often a sense of relief or, oh, I wish I would have done it sooner. And I'm not promoting, you know, eliminating people from their jobs. But what I am promoting is figuring out what you need to do to gain focus. Ask yourself some questions and count how many times you could say yes to this. Do you personally focus on growing your business and team simultaneously? Do you provide team members with regular feedback, both written and verbal? Do you consistently praise in public and coach in private? Do all of your team members have a professional development plan that you are actively supporting? Do you leverage emotional intelligence when necessary? Do your team members come to you with potential solutions rather than just the problems? Does your team support the principle of disagree and commit? Is your team culture drama free? Do they understand what it means to stay in their lane? And do you proactively manage or uh, someone to lead the team when it's just not best for the business? Those are all questions that you can think about. And what I can tell you is if you focus on those things, you're going to be way better off than if you hadn't. That's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have a topic you want us to discuss, learn more at AgileDad.com. We would love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.